Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Group. Today, we're baking. We're making an almond cake with rhubarbs on it. And it's a beautiful cake, as I hope you just saw. Um, I saw it on Instagram, posted by, it's um, kind of a restaurant cafe in Stockholm called Cafe Nizza. And I tried it out myself, but I didn't get there. Um, there were great cakes, but I didn't get the, the rhubarb to look like it should, according to the picture. But I wrote them and asked them how they actually did it, and they gave me some tips. Um, and I tried it out a couple of times since then, and it's, it's just a beautiful cake that also tastes good. But before we get on to the ingredients, as always, don't forget, hit the subscribe button and check the bell icon so that you get notifications every Tuesday when a new episode comes out. But now, let's have a look at the board. So if we divide it up, the rhubarb are separate together with some sugar syrup where we're gonna cook the rhubarb in. And the sugar syrup, it's a one to two ratio of sugar to water. So not one to one, but one to two. One part sugar, two parts water. And for the almond cake, we have 180 grams of egg whites, 180 grams of butter, 180 grams of sugar, and eight grams of vanilla sugar. We have 120 grams of grated almond, and 45 grams of normal plain flour. And we need a zest of one lemon as well. And the first thing we need to do, and that's why I have another pot up here, is we need to brown our butter, because we need brown butter for this. So while that is browning, we'll start putting the other stuff for the cake together. Once the cake is in the oven, we'll get going with the rhubarb. So for the cake, we'll start with putting the egg whites in a bigger bowl. And we'll just whisk dip this up a bit. It doesn't need to be stiff or anything, we just want to get a little bit of air into the egg whites. We're fine with that. And we'll get our lemon zest in. And now we can put in basically all our dry ingredients, the almonds, the sugar and vanilla sugar. And the flour. Just give this a good mix. No, and all we're missing now is the brown butter, but I will still take a minute or two. So I'll see you when the brown butter is ready. And you know what? That it's ready when you have that kind of nutty flavor. I would just mix in the butter into the batter. It's quite close to, I don't know if you know it, but a madeleine dough, or like French madeleines. But the madeleine doughs I know kind of use, of, use powdered sugar instead of caster sugar. So that's one of the differences, but the rest is quite similar. And you want all the kind of brown bits from the pot as well. Now we just need to make sure that everything is incorporated nicely. Now we need to do some prep. Put the oven at 180 degrees Celsius and get a spring form or a spring pan out. Now this is my spring pan. And as you can see, I've added baking paper at the bottom, just as an extra insurance that it doesn't stick. And we need to butter this, so get some butter out. We'll put a bit of butter in there. And then what I tend to do is just to take some kitchen paper. And although you don't really need to butter the baking, paper. I would say double is always better. And obviously you need to go around the edges as well. The edges are more important than the bottom. That's enough. This is not going to be a very high cake, maybe 
something like that at the end. So now we're good. We'll get another tool. I always forget what this is called in English. I think it's like a spatula, plastic spatula. In Swedish, it's called slickepot, which means something you lick off of, which is what kids normally do once one of their parents have made a cake or a batter that's nice and sweet. So basically, slickepot comes from this licking the spatula. Now we're good to go with the cake, into the oven. Now, it's always a bit different depending on your oven, and I don't know what it all depends on, but I like to keep this in for about 20 to 25 minutes, probably closer to 25 minutes, but you have to check it. You can check it with a toothpick just to make sure that it's cooked in the middle. So we put this in, and then I'll show you what we're doing with the rhubarb. So we washed our rhubarb, now we need to Cut off the ends, both sides. That's perfect. And then the same here. Now the ends you can use if you make a rhubarb compote or something like that. So we'll put them to the side. Don't need a knife anymore. Now we need a mandolin. And all we're going to do is, we probably have to do this in two goes until the, we get to the flat part. Oh, we got a flat one here. And this, you know, it's washed. You can eat this. So I like the color, so we're going to keep this as well. And then you just continue to kind of slice off nice rhubarb slices. Thickness-wise, yeah, don't worry too much about it. Two millimeters, something like that. Be careful with your fingers though. And now, yeah, I think we're probably gonna need for the cake, maybe four of these. So do four of them. And as you saw at the beginning, the goal is to kind of cover the cake with these length of rhubarb. So make sure you have enough to cover the cake. I'll see you when we're done with this. And here we are. It's always good to have some extra because this is, I think the cake is probably this wide but then you can play around with it and maybe one of them breaks when we boil them in the, in the sugar syrup. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the mandolins are dangerous. You have to be careful. I wasn't careful, so I cut myself. So I'll get the plaster on that and then we'll move over there and we'll uh, cook the rhubarb. So here we have our sugar syrup. It's been brought to a boil and it's now, yeah, it's not even a simmer. I have it on five out of nine on my stove. And the easiest way is to kind of roll up the rhubarb like this and then we just let it in and you time that for three minutes. So they've been in for three minutes. We'll take them out and we'll do the second batch and then I'll see you in the front again. So we lay them out as you saw them on top of the cake. We're going to let them cool now and then I'll show you what we do once the cake is ready because we'll take the, the spring pan and we'll put it underneath, press down, and then we'll cut according to the marking that we'll get so that they fit perfectly onto the cake afterwards. But uh, the cake has another couple of minutes. So I'll see you when that is done. I'll put this away to cool down. Our beautiful cake. Not to be on the safe side. It shouldn't be stuck anywhere, but just run a knife around it. Now we'll get this open. Now this is the beauty of the baking paper. Let's get our cooling rack. Let's see if we can manage this without burning ourselves. And then we just let it cool like that. I'll see you in probably an hour once it's nice and cold. Our rhubarb has cooled down nicely. We have our spring pan. Now you just choose somewhere where you think that it looks nice. I would say that's a quite nice design. And then we just press down. 
take it off and now we cut around this. You have to be a little bit careful so that you don't slip and slide. Go back up here. So let's remove what we can. And this tastes really good already. Now here we'll be a bit more careful because it's kind of it's in the place where the blood goes when you cut meat. I don't know what you call it. So that's what you need. So now it's just a case of being careful. We'll get our knife in. And then we place this onto the almond cake. I will take a while, but I'll see you once this is done. And here we go with the last one. Now that everything is cool, and we put our rhubarb on the cake. Let's get it onto a cake stand. And what you can do now is to take the sugar syrup that you had, not too much, you don't want to drench the, the almond cake, but just put some on top of the rhubarb, which makes it really nice and shiny. But now, let's give it a try. But before we go ahead and cut this beautiful cake, as always, if you stuck with it this far, there must have been something you enjoyed about this episode with our almond cake and rhubarb. So do me the huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's just down there below and just takes you a second. But I would be very, very happy if you could do that. But now let's cut this. I'm not going to take too big of a piece. Look at that, perfectly cooked, and perfectly baked. Let's start with the tip. Mm. Nice, buttery, almondy, but with freshness there because of the rhubarb. Very moist cake. You don't even need a spoon, you can go like this. A perfect cake for spring, because at least in Switzerland, rhubarb is kind of season end of March till somewhere beginning of May, which is now, and I just love it. But that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, hit the subscribe, check the bell icon. Oh, you know what to do. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.